Hello, this is Alexi George, and I just wanted to take a moment to share some thoughts with our Vineyard India family. So it's been a, a good month uh, during last month to uh, get to see a couple of people that um, uh, did some wonderful things that are helpful to all of us. Uh, Rick Evans with the Preaching Boot Camp, uh, <coughs> and I know that many benefited from that. Uh, and Robbie Dawkins, uh, he did the um, uh, sharing Jesus and praying for the sick in challenging times. That was also very nice, uh, kind of a good reminder for all of us. And um, this morning, I wanted to just um, share some unique thoughts with you because, you know, when all of this pandemic began, uh, I never thought, we never thought, nobody ever thought that it would last this long. And I remember at that time, some people were saying that, you know, it could go till December. And and some were saying it could go on for a year or two. And I thought, wow, I don't know where these people are coming from. I was thinking maybe a couple of weeks or a month at the most. Those were my thoughts. But, you know, others, they were able to see uh, better into the situation that was going on. So now, uh, last uh, month, September, last Sunday was supposed to be the time where in Kerala, we were supposed to have up to, a, uh, up to 100 people uh, we could gather together. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, and then so, so therefore, we thought, okay, from October, first Sunday onwards, you know, we'll, we'll start meeting uh, in church. Of course, with all the social distancing and all the norms, you know, that are set up by the government, we'll do all of that, and then we'll meet together uh, beginning October 1st uh, for Sunday. But, you know, it was just before that, Kerala went into a, you know, that, whatever you call that, 144 uh, thing, and uh, you can only have five people gather, and now there's confusion, you know, some people are saying 40 can gather, 20 can gather. I have no idea. You know, we, are, we don't know what to think. You know, it keeps changing from day to day. So it's like we can't plan for Sunday because, you know, we could barely plan for tomorrow. And uh, that seems to be the situation. So uh, a very unique thought uh, has come to my mind is kind of a reshuffling of the church. In other words, you know, this whole thing of church attendance, um, you know, is that an obligation or is it a passion of the soul? Now, you know, how important is church attendance? I mean, does that define your entry into heaven? Does that define your salvation? You know, I, uh, you know, no, of course. You know, no, of course not. You know, uh, salvation is dependent on Jesus and the work he did on the cross. Nothing else. And uh, and our and you know and we just uh, trust him for that and that's that's what that's how we have salvation. But church attendance is definitely an indicator. And so the question that comes to my mind is: it an obligation or is it a passion? See, as an obligation, you know, we're often urged by family, friends, and even other church members. You know, urged, pushed, shoved, pulled, cajoled, or forced or whatever it is you know like go to church come to church you know and you know we, we do this kind of thing and um, I, I'm not sure if it's all that good um, and maybe there's some healthy elements to that as well you know we uh, if we've seen that you know we've created a culture where if if you look around and if somebody that we know somebody that's part of your small group or your carousel is not there on Sunday you know, we make it a practice to help our members to be able to contact them and just say, hey, how are you? Um, I didn't see you in church last Sunday. Is everything okay? You know, it's not to force them. It's not to kind of make them feel guilty or make them feel bad. But it's really a kind of an encouragement and also caring aspect. You know, it's kind of a, a mutual care. And of course, you know, um, we're also encouraged by pastors. Of course, not to force them, but to encourage them and to build them up. Now, if this kind of a push is not there, or the pull to the church attendance is not there, will they fall back? Or 
do they need that kind of a support, you know, kind of um, somebody to kind of, uh, kind of move them in that direction uh, until they're able to, to do those things on their own or until they get to that point where they'll, you know, do that regularly, church attendance on a regular basis, okay? And now, of course, we might say, well, come on, you know, why do you keep talking about this church attendance? You know, is, is that, and I said, as earlier, I said, you know, uh, no, that is not, uh, that does not determine our salvation. But, you know, coming to church uh, does give you an opportunity to uh, connect with other fellow believers and brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And also, you end, end up getting regular teaching and your children and, and, and families, you know, you connect with good like-minded and so many benefits are there and of course you know the regular constant consistent teaching of the word of god so many benefits are there so is it an obligation the next question that comes to my mind is it a passion well if it's a passion then you're driven internally you know it's it's you know if someone goes to church as as their passion then um you know, they're going to church because they love Jesus. They're thankful for, for salvation, or their thankfulness for salvation urges them. And uh, so, you know, this is a point where they're not driven by their needs any longer. Now, I want you to understand, many of us uh, did come to Christ as a result of the needs in our life. And, and Jesus, he met us. At the point of our needs and he forgave our sins he delivered us he healed us of our sickness and he's a constant help and guide and on and on and on it goes you know so many things are there these are needs that we have but there's a point in our Christian life where we move beyond the needs you know where we relate to Jesus for the purpose of needs you know I need something I go to him you know I, I visit the ATM when I need to take money out of the uh, out of the bank. I don't just go to the ATM just so I can go stand there and you know look at the ATM or just to be with the ATM for today. No, I, you know I don't care about that ATM except for what it can do to me for me. You know it uh, provides me what I need at that point if the money is there in the bank. But Jesus, he could become like that. Maybe in the early stages he was like that, you know, I, with a lot of my needs, going to him constantly, Lord, I'm in trouble again, I need your help again, and that's fine. But there's a point where you move beyond that and the relationship with Jesus begin to build and to develop and, and it's no longer driven by needs, it's driven by just a love and a passion for Christ. You know, I remember the, uh, the story of the lady who went to the house where Jesus was and, and she began to sit at his feet and to cry and to weep and, and the tears were flowing down onto the feet of Jesus. She's wiping his feet with her hair and, and kissing his feet and all of that. She didn't care about what anybody thought about her or what she was doing. Now, there were others that cared and they didn't, and she didn't care about them either. Now, we might say, wait a minute, you know, in our society, such a thing would be unthinkable. But you know what? In their society also, it was unthinkable. But for her, it didn't matter. She just was just pouring out her heart to him because literally he gave her life back. And it was just a thankfulness. So is it a passion? Or an obligation. So which one do we take? You know, both has its benefits. You know, when you see it as an obligation, it's like the urging and the coercing and the cajoling or the pulling or the pushing. You know, th there is a certain element of good to that as well. And, uh, but how do you find that balance? Because, you know, there is a lot to be said about that passion idea. Am I going to church because it's, uh, because I want to, because I love Jesus. I just want to spend time with him. I don't need to get anything else except just be with him, you know. And that ought to be the place where we get to eventually. How do you balance that, the both, both of those things? See, when you lean into one, you leave out the benefits of the other. In other words, when you lean into the idea of obligation, 
you know, you can kind of uh, get, you can become pushy and you can even become legalistic and, and that's not healthy. It just is not healthy. And so you end up to, you look at the other idea of passion and you say, well, I go to church because of my, I'm driven you know, to go. So uh, you leave it there and say, well, you know, you come to church if, you know, if, if you really love the Lord and uh, if you really want to. If not, that's fine. Stay home. Just do whatever you want, you know. And I could leave it there too. But then will I leave out those who are a bit weak and those who may need a little bit more of an encouragement? So finding that balance, is, it's not an easy thing. It's a difficult thing. You know, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 25, 26, in those verses, Jesus uh, <coughs> uh, was uh, dealing with a question of entering the kingdom of God. And the answer that Jesus gave really surprised the disciples. They were just astonished. Look, at, Let's look at verse 25. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? Verse 26, But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You know what? Church attendance... Should it be an obligation or a passion? And you know what? I don't know what's the best answer. But I do know. I do know that we have to lean on God. Because with us, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And we're trying to figure out what to do. And those of you who are listening to me today, you are pastors and leaders in vineyard churches all over India, and you have also faced these questions and these struggles, I'm sure. But I think the answer is Jesus. The answer is to lean on God and say, God, I, you know, I have some thoughts, but I don't have the answer. I need you. I need you to come help me because, Lord, with me, this is impossible. But I know that with you, all things are possible. So, can I pray for you? Father, I just thank you for those who are listening to me. And I just um, pray for an awesome presence of the Lord to fill their hearts and their minds. Lord, even those who are struggling to just maintain their, their, their equilibrium or their, their, their sanity, they're struggling with what to do. Even those who are handling fear, those who are dealing with a lot of uncertainty or dealing with inadequacy of thinking, Lord, I, how can I lead your people? How can I do the things that I need to do? These are questions, Lord, that we all have. And I bless these people and I say, Lord, would you come? Encourage them. Build them. Build them up, O oh Lord, with more of your grace, more of your power, more of your strength, O oh Lord. Because, Lord, we know that with us it is impossible, but with you all things are possible. So, Lord, we cling on to you, Lord, because we know that you will lead us. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you. And I uh, just wish you a great day today. Bye.